Okay, I'm back. Still don't know if I'm doing this correctly. God, there's a lot of light in here. Well, I'll just start talking and if there's people there, that's great. If not, oh well. <laughs> I talk to myself all the time anyway. Let me make sure the volume's turned up. Of course it wasn't. Okay, um, I'm CJ from Sweet Harvest Farms. I'm the proprietor of Sweet Harvest Farms. And what we do here is we create and formulate all organic bath and body products from soap to lotion, uh, lip balm, which I call lip smoothie because I don't like the term lip balm, and more. And um, this is really bothering me. Let me, call, let me close this blind a minute. Just talk amongst yourselves. And I'm back. Okay, so one of the questions I get a lot um, when I'm at the markets or the shows is, what is, you know, does, do you have, use lye? Well, absolutely. And I'll tell you why. You cannot have real soap without lye. Um, the lye process is called saponification. It's much like fermentation with wine. And once the oils and the lye are mixed together, there's a chemical reaction, and that chemical reaction creates a salt, and that particular salt is called soap. Uh, there's no lye left in the soap once the curing uh, period is over, which is about four weeks. So from the day I make the soap, I have to count it four weeks for it to be ready to use. In that time, it's all melding together. The lye is uh, dissipating, and it's act the soap bar is actually getting to the same pH as your skin. Also, True Soap contains authentic, natural soap glycerin. That is what your um, skin needs and it wants. If you ever see a bar that has glycerin listed on it, eh, it's probably not a good idea to use it because when people put glycerin on their label, that means that they've added the glycerin. And the glycerin does not come from soap. The reason I know this is because soap glycerin is a hot commodity and is usually siphoned off by big companies uh, to sell as a cosmetic uh, byproduct, and it's very, very expensive. So what people do is they will use glycerin that it either comes from plants, which is not bad, but it's really not what your skin wants, and or biodiesel fuel. And most likely, I can't say all the time, but a lot of the times um, that is what they use because it is so inexpensive. I have a dog that needs to go potty. I'll be right back. Come <laughs> Come on. Now I have to get up again when the dogs want to come back in. Anyway, um, so another thing about uh, people ask me is what the difference between a true soap and a beauty bar. Well, I would say probably close to 90% of what you get at your stores, including your health food store, is a beauty bar and not a soap. And... <sighs> What I mean by this is a lot, you know, there's a lot of people that are scared of the word, word lie. In fact, a lot of soap makers, true soap makers, which by the way, there's only about 50 of us left in all the United States. Um, they're even scared of the word because people don't want to hear the word lie. But they could use different words to kind of get around. Like I don't put lie on my label simply because it scares people. So I put saponified oils of, and then I list all the oils. 
And that's because the word saponify means that there has been uh, a lye and a oil mixture. Um, there's a lot of other words that, that they use. But the difference is that when these big soap companies make their soap, first of all, they don't use organic oils. Second of all, they use very um, inexpensive, cheap oils. And then during the soap making process, they actually siphon the glycerin and some of the other expensive byproducts to sell so that they can make more money. What is left is what I call, excuse me, but crap. So what they do then is they add mineral oil that comes from biodiesel fuel and our petroleum byproduct, and they'll also add glycerin, which does not come from soap, it comes from a plant or petroleum base. Um, they'll add lanolin because it feels good on your skin, but you don't want it. Lanolin is actually one of the worst things to put on your skin because it comes from the sheep's wool. And what happens when it rains on a sheep? It beads off. So um, your skin wants moisture, and that lanolin is going to keep that moisture from getting into your skin, into your pores. Um, and then they add other stuff, chemicals and preservatives, because it's going to sit on a shelf forever. Um, so, in fact, the FDA probably, I guess going on about eight years ago, decided that they, you know, everyone's been jumping on this handmade soap thing, you know, this train that's just, you know, everyone's doing handmade soap. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, um, anyway, these, these companies... Well, anyway, the FDA about eight years ago said that they were going to start fining people hefty fines if they claimed to have soap when they didn't. So if you look at the new Dove labeling, which actually they were one of the first to jump on the bandwagon, the label now says beauty bar. It doesn't say soap because it's not. So that's one of the big differences. Um, of a beauty bar and a soap. Also, beauty bars will get, they'll leave a film on your tub, which means they, it, that film is staying on your skin. Um, they melt very quickly, become gushy and slimy, and um, ugh, it's, just, <laughs> it's just nasty. Because, you know, that's, that's what's on your skin. And remember, your skin is the largest organ on your body, and it absorbs everything. Now, there are people that will argue and say, well, you know, it would take a long time for your skin to absorb all these chemicals and preservatives. And well, that might be true, but you're using that bar every single day of your life. So it doesn't take all that long for these chemicals and preservatives to be absorbed in, through your skin, into your bloodstream, straight to your liver and your kidneys and other vital organs. So, um, I'm just, I'm trying to think of all the questions that people throw at me. Um, one thing that you do want to look for to, if you're looking for a good soap is the cure date. There has to be a cure date on the back that says, do not use until a certain day. Now, having said that, there's a lot of people that know that. So they're, they're just starting to put cure dates, just pulling numbers out of the air and putting it on the back of the bar to deceive. You also want to stay away from products that say um, that tell you what's not in it. You know, I don't, I don't care what's not in it because if you give a true list of everything that's in it, then I don't need to know what's not in it. So don't. That's kind of like a. Um, it's very deceitful because you think, oh well, it doesn't have this, it doesn't have that. It means it must be good. No, that's not necessarily true. You want to know what it has in it, and you know the FDA only requires. Um, companies to put 85% of their ingredients, believe it or not. So I've always put 100%. I want my customer to know every single thing that they are putting on their skin. I was in the medical field for 24 years, and so that is very important to me um, that everybody is aware of what they're using. And if you don't, if you really don't know, you know, the thing that makes this time and error very um very unique in a way that the children, our children, I'm old, so our children didn't have what we have now, is you can actually go into a store 
and Google every ingredient on the back of any product and, um, and look it up before you even purchase. We didn't have that convenience when I was growing up. So y'all are very lucky. And you know, yeah, it takes time and it can be a hassle, but you know what? The rewards are gonna be so much more important to you and your family and your friends. Um, anybody have any questions? The reason that there's only about 50 true soap makers left in the U.S. is because it's very laborious. It's, it's hard work and it's dangerous. Working with lye is not the easiest. Um, you know, we get our oils in 50 pound pails. Um, those all have to be measured manually into each bucket that I make into soap. And then there's a the process of making the lye and uh, solution. Um, you know, just the whole process is very laborious. I have to say, though, um, I met a soap maker, a true soap maker from North Carolina, and she had been, this was a few years back, and she had been making soap for probably almost 30, 35 years. And she called me one day, and she would gotten hold of one of my bars, and she said, CJ, um, I want to tell you that I am a soap maker, and I've been making soap for almost 35 years. And when I want a real treat and something that I know is really good, she goes, I buy your soap. Which was extremely flattering, but why would she buy my soap if she was making real soap herself? Well, because everybody that makes true soap, their recipe is different. So my recipe is gonna be completely different than someone else's recipe. I didn't get my recipe from a soap making book. I got it from up here and from the medical knowledge that I have accrued over the years. So everyone is, is different. Um, but anyway, so you know, another thing that you'll find is that a lot of tr soap makers um, say that they use a base. A lot of people ask me, oh, what's your base? Well, I don't use a base. Um, bases are products that come, okay, have you ever been to Michael's? Go to the craft section and you'll see they have these slabs of what they call soap. That's what a base is. So people that use bases are getting these slabs from huge manufacturers that use tons of chemicals and preservatives they cut it up in their home, put it in a bucket, put a little color, a little scent, some herbs, and glycerin, which does not come from soap, <clears throat> and um, remelt it, pour it, in a, pour it in a mold, cut it, wrap it, and call it handmade soap. And they justify this because it was made in their home. Well, it really wasn't made in their home. All they did was melt, remelt a, a slab that they got. So you have to be really, really careful when you um, get a soap that says that it has been made with a base. Like I said, you know, a lot of this stuff is deceitful. Some is done purposely and some is just because they just don't know. Um, you have to be really careful. Ask those questions. Just remember that everything you put on your skin gets into your bloodstream, gets to your kidneys, your liver, all your vital organs. So you just want to be really careful. And no one's had any questions. Any questions? Hi, Cindy. Hi, Monet, Susan. Well, um, I'm gonna do a live feed either once or twice a week. Uh, I'm gonna try to be consistent doing it at the same time and the same day so that people know when I'm gonna be on. And each time I'm going to be touching on something um, that I think is very important uh, for you as a customer to know. Um, if so, please, please email me your questions at soapdiva at sweetharvestfarms.com or go to Facebook and just PM me a message um, or text me, um, email me, just, you know, whichever way you know is is suited for you or whichever way you feel comfortable and um anything that you'd want to ask please uh feel free 
uh, to comment or to ask me, and I'll be more than happy um, to answer as best I can. <laughs> so, um, if you have any, even if you see this video later and you have any questions, um, just PM me or in the comment section and just let me know because there might be something that I haven't touched on. Um, just to let you know that my soaps are the real deal and my daughter hates when I say that. But it's the truth. Um, and everything is done from scratch, totally from scratch. Um, everything I do is my own recipe. Um, most everything I do is patented, which, yes, was a lot of money, but it was worth it. And um, I, I care very much about my customers, and I care very much about what people use and what they put on their skin, as you can tell. So um, if you have any questions at all, maybe next week I'll touch on the anti-aging serum that we have or the organic tooth powder. Um, give me some ideas. Let me know what you'd like me to talk about. And uh, we'll see you next week. And I'll be sure and put it, put it out in plenty of time so that everyone can join in. Um, this is, of course, was at noon, and I don't know why I picked that time. But if you feel that it might be better at 6 or 7 in the evening when uh, most people are home and from work, I can do that too. So um, thank you all so much for joining in, and uh, have a great day, and we'll see you soon. Bye.